and welcome in to the very first episode here of Skyhawk Sports Talk for season number two. Davis Gregor here, lead play-by-play announcer for the Skyhawk Sports Network. Here with the voice of Skyhawks, Chris Brinkley. Chris, year number one was completed for us. Great success for Skyhawk Sports Talk. That's right. We are back for a second yeah. season. Going to be a great, great show for us. Yeah, Zach Spies and Martin here. And again, uh, every Monday at noon, we encourage you to come out and hang out with us at Zach Spies. And what we learned last year is that our coaches are incredibly entertaining. So it's yes. going to be a great season of uh, sports talk here, and it's going to go all the way through April. We're going to have a great setup, too, to start the year. Cross country starts the weekend. We'll talk to head coach Jolita Henderson. Mm-hmm. Then soccer already going. They have a whole match on Thursday. We'll preview that here in a second with this week in Skyhawk Athletics. But Mike Varden joins us to talk about things going on in the soccer program. Jacqueline Wilson and her volleyball Skyhawks will start the year over the weekend in Tuscaloosa at the Crimson Tide Invitational. And then wrapping up our show, head coach of the UT Martin football team, Jason Simpson, will join us. And we'll preview Kansas State, talk about the excitement around college football as this year getting ready to roll. But we'll hop into this week in Skyhawk Athletics. Chris, go ahead. What have we got in soccer? Well, students are back on campus. That's a big deal. And soccer's at home on Thursday, right? Yes, and on ESPN Plus as yeah, well. Yes, and you're doing play-by-play. Yes, yes. and it will be at 7 o'clock at night. We're going to have Skyhawk Palooza. More on that in a second. But Skyhawk Palooza will be going on probably towards the beginning of that match. That's when the Palooza will start to wrap up. Make sure, if you go to the Skyhawk Palooza, mm-hmm. we're going to be at the soccer match after right. 100%. Right. You cannot miss it. Going to be a fantastic match between OVC and Missouri Valley Conference, UT Martin and Indiana State. Both of them met last year. It was a quality, quality match between two great soccer programs. Then for volleyball, Crimson Tide Invitational. They took on Citadel and Grambling on Friday. Citadel at 10 a.m., Grambling State at 3.30. And then take on the Alabama Crimson Tide from the Southeastern Conference at 2 p.m. That'll be on Saturday. Cross Country at the Memphis Twilight Cross Country Crack. Cross Country Classic. Getting a little jumbled up there here at the start, but we'll straighten things out as we get on. The women, they'll run at 9.20 p.m., running a 5K. The men, a four mile at 10 p.m. Get your coffee and you get ready to go. It's it's going to be, right? <laughs> be a late, late night for our cross country team. Yeah. And then finally, our football team. They will be at number 18, Kansas State, at 6 p.m. Kickoff will be on ESPN+. Plus. We'll have the broadcast for you on the Skyhawk Sports Network. 30-minute pregame, and then it's head-to-head with the 18th ranked Wildcats as we get this Skyhawk season started. But Chris, yep. go more in depth here. Skyhawk Palooza on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, so one of the things I know is that the city of Martin's coming together in our town and gown organization for a night of fun and festivities. And I know there's a two word uh, of reveal here food trucks. Lots food of trucks. food trucks. Lots Everyone lots. loves their food trucks. Yeah, yeah, so lots of food trucks will be there. We'll be celebrating the Skyhawks, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Skyhawk athletes, they're going to have it tent set up with prizes that you can win. Going to have a live band, too. Mm-hmm. And what more could you ask for here to get your school year started, to get this athletic season rolling? Chris said at food trucks, they'll open at 4 p.m., and then the night's events will begin at 5 p.m. And brand new, brand spanking new. What? The Skyhawk Team Shop, Chris. Uh, it is open. You will be able to go online, be able to get all your Skyhawk merch for all your favorite teams. Get your football stuff, your volleyball, your soccer, everything. All that you need, Skyhawk Team Shop, and it's going to be open there on that Thursday afternoon. Awesome. And that's Thursday night before soccer. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to the soccer match. Okay. After that. On the UT Martin campus. All right, yes. I'm fired up. Let's yes. do our first podcast yep. of the year. And we're going to take a break. When we come back, head coach of the UT Martin cross country team, Jolita Henderson, will join us to kick off season two of Skyhawk Sports Talk. If I quit this season, I still be the greatest. Skyhawk Sports Talk podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. And we're back here on the Skyhawk Sports Talk podcast. Davis Gregor here again with Chris Brinkley. Now joining us, making her first appearance here in the second season, head coach of the UT Martin Cross Country team, Jolie the Henderson. Coach, thanks for coming on and making the debut here for us. Thank yeah. you for having me. And you led last year in appearances. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The team leader in appearances. She is back. Superstar yeah. of the show. First of all, how was the off season? How was the summer? How are things going? Oh, the summer was not long enough, <laughs> honestly. Um, cross country really doesn't get time off, so you're, we're trying to get them back and ready immediately to go ahead and get started. We just started classes, and we have a meet this weekend. So, mm-hmm. yeah, got to get them ready as soon as we can. Uh, a lot of recruiting, a lot of organization stuff, paperwork stuff, stuff that we don't get to do 
during track outdoor season. We try to take care of it in the, in the summer. You know, in some sports, you really can maybe rest a little bit in the yeah. summer and you need to. Mm-hmm. You're, in your sport, uh, is it more difficult to take a break and then get back into it? Is. It is. It's yeah. very difficult. So we take a two week breaks mm-hmm. um, a lot in between different things just to kind of supplement the fact that you don't get a month off. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Yeah. And I would think, I don't know, I'm t- way out of my league, I don't know what I'm talking about, but from a muscular standpoint, you can get right back in, but it's the lungs that are so important, yes. especially with the distance yes. running, right? very. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the strategy then in the summertime to get them, the returners still ready? I mean, what's the message to them? How do they train to still make sure that, I mean, first week of school, boom, we're ready to go. Yeah. So what we try to do in the summer is not do so much on the legs when we first get done with outdoor season it's like okay if you can swim if you can bike that's better because it still helps with good cardio and stuff and then take a real time of doing completely nothing you know like give yourself that and then work your way back up into your mileage little by little until you can get up to those those higher volumes how long did it take you to learn that when you were an athlete when you were competing I mean, you're still an athlete but, yeah. uh, oh, it, took, it took a while to understand mm-hmm. truthfully like Oh, I'm supposed to do nothing. Like when you're used to running every day or doing something every day, it's like, oh, you don't want me to do anything. And mm-hmm. You kind of go against the grain, and then it's like you break it down in the middle of the season. It's like, okay, I probably should have took that yeah. time off so I could feel better right now. Yeah, yeah. And start off the season with the Memphis Twilight Classic. We were just talking about it off the air that this seems to be the traditional start year for UT Martin Cross Country. Is boom, we're running and we're running late at night to women 5K at 9:20, and then the men a four mile at 10 p.m. How are we feeling for this first meet? Um, so previous years we've always like tempoed that race, kind of like okay, we're gonna try to get people into it and stuff like that. But our schedule this year is so competitive. In like in general, and we're hosting conference this year, so we have some big goals. So we're gonna, you know, try to compete a little bit more at the Memphis Twilight Meet. Uh, start picking off people one by one, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Yep. Twilight now that, that means it starts late. Yes, it's late. Yeah. Yes. What's that like? We don't leave until like five o'clock. Yeah. And get there by like seven. That's two hours before they have to they you know warm up and get ready they don't race till nine um uh, is it different on the athlete yes because we usually practice at 6 a.m yeah so to run that late at night it is an adjustment but I mean, it's fun it's nice you know the history is it a novelty of, of the history no of it? Yeah. what it is yeah. but it's literally all day because they have middle school races they have high school races and then college is late at night yeah yeah, Davis and I were just talking. About, I mean, you'd want to just take drink coffee. We can't obviously you can't do that. No, we cannot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you gotta just plan your sleep schedule around. Yeah, it, I guess you do get naps and everything. And like that. caffeine actually isn't bad for them. Like some of them do, but like that close to yeah. your race, yeah, it's a little tough. It it does. It's a little adjustment. Like your first time running, it's like oh whoa, like. Yeah, that's what we're doing, and you run at the time where you're like, okay, I'm usually in bed by now. So. Yeah, right. And I would assume that the last thing you do after a, a strong run is just go to sleep. So then you're awake for the next. You're awake maybe till the sun comes up. Yes and no. So when they get done, uh, obviously we have to feed them. So it's not the best meal. So they're eating pizza at night because who's open? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Who's open at ten right. o'clock at night? So we'll probably get some pizza mm-hmm. and ride back. And the good thing is that Labor Day is on that that yeah. Monday, so they do kind of. It's like okay, you get a good enough time to rest, and we'll we'll hit back it hard later yeah. on yeah gotcha. get the extra day off so 10 returners for the men five for the women sam schumann and luke johnson they are back as well maggie roy rita eimer make up a really strong women's team too and you mentioned two home meets well one home meet yeah is the ovc championship we'll get to that in a second but your first one going to be in union city ovc preview september 14th 9 a.m Talk about just the planning that goes into that during the off season of okay, we're back to, and we're going to host a cross country meet here and get the best teams in the conference, bring them all here and compete against each other. Yeah, so hosting a, a cross country race is stressful. You have to build a course, you have to find the land to do it. Well, 
we're in Martin, Tennessee. I mean, like, there's plenty of land to do it, but also finding somebody that's willing to allow you to do it. So we do, you know, really appreciate Union City and their parks and recs for allowing where us were, to Where will you be? Where you it's at Grand Park. Grand Park. Yeah, okay. yeah, which is really nice. Yeah, so it's like the baseball field, softball yeah, field, there's so much, golf course. Yeah, there's so much there. space yeah. and stuff. So we really appreciate them for helping us and the patience that they've had of trying to figure out the course. Because not only, it's not just, oh, I have to find where we can do 2K loops or a 5K or 8K, whatever. It's the NCAA guidelines for all of it. So you have to have a, a turn within a certain amount of time, a certain amount of distance. You ha- can't have, you know, certain things within the first beginning of the race. Like there's all these different guidelines that you have to follow. So it's trying to get that done and get that taken care of. And then the OVC Championship, that's going to be November 1st, also in Union City. This is going to be the first time the event's been in West Tennessee since 2004. Which is sweet. And UT wow. Martin has hosted the event once, it was in Oxford, Alabama in 2014. Yeah. Talk about the excitement here. You're getting the OVC Championship in your home state. This is going to be electric. Yes, it's nice. Um the really good thing is that our kids get to sleep in their own bed. Yeah. Like and people don't really think that, you know, you travel in other sports and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, you get up, it's fine. You stay in a hotel, but a lot of kids don't like to sleep at hotels and they're like, okay, I'd rather be at home. Well, here we go. We are at home. Take care of business. Like, we're, we're going for some really good stuff at conference. You know, that's what Kevin, Kevin McMillan's saying, too. He would always say in the home games, you're in your own bed. Yeah. I mean, you think maybe there are more distractions at home, but just being in your own bed is huge. It makes yeah. a big difference. And then it's like, okay, we know what's around here. Mm-hmm. We know what they're going to eat. We know what we're going to feed them. When we travel other places, we're like, well, is this really good? Like, do we really want this? Like, do they really want that? So it's just being comfortable and that's the biggest thing for them to be able to be more relaxed and ready ready to race yeah how exciting yeah. Yeah. fun season coming up for UT Martin cross country Jolita Henderson thank you so much for joining us good luck here in this year thank yeah. you we will take a break when we come back head coach of the UT Martin soccer team Mike Varga will be joining us on Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast if I quit this season, I still be the Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan and back here on Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast, Davis Gregory here in with Chris Brinkley, joining us here, second season as the UT Martin soccer head coach. Mike Varga, coach, must be nice here, your second year, all settled in, ready to go. And back here, again, also on the first episode as well, we're getting yeah. a lot of those first episode guests back, so it's been awesome. Coach, how you doing? Good. I, I'm not homeless. I, I know where Zaxby's <laughs> is, yeah. so we're, we're good. Yeah, no, really, so, yeah, a lot has happened. Was it a quick 12 months for you? or how it, was, it went fast. Yeah. It was uh, the first season's a, a blur still with yeah. trying to fly back to Charlotte and then get a U-Haul, drive stuff back. I think I did that three different weekends and made yeah. sure I was back in time for the show. Well, you handled it extremely well. <laughs> yes. I, mean, I know it, it had to be one of the most stressful years of your life just with every the transition going on in so many different ways. Yeah, I, I, I don't get stressed. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's all good. So it's help move the ball <laughs> bus. Yes, how, do, how do you live a life without stress? The, you know, a big thing is I, I relied on the people in this community that you know they're so supportive and so helpful. It's it yeah. was uh, you know it's it's not fun to fly and drive. A, well, it's not fun to drive a U-Haul ever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the people here have been incredible. Yeah. The team has been incredible. So no, it's. Yeah, it's been a blast. That's an awesome. I love that. I love that uh, that statement, though. I don't stress. I don't get stressed. It's yeah, perfect. You control what you control, and mm-hmm. don't get stressed about the other. Yeah. That's how to do it. Because <laughs> I mean, Alex and I, when we went to Gardner Webb, and we went up there where you coached at before, I mean, eight hour drive, and then you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing that. Like you know, every other week, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how is this guy doing this? So. Like, we came back. I'm in a U-Haul mm-hmm. on Route 40 before you get to Knoxville. Accident. I can't. And it's 10 o'clock at night. And we, Jennifer's driving the car behind me. We were there on the road for at least seven hours. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Slept in the U-Haul. Couldn't turn around. Couldn't oh. get off the interstate. There was an accident, unfortunately. Yeah. And yeah. Slept in a U-Haul. That's our biggest fear as drivers, I think, is when you're on an interstate and you see the other side. Just that's, dead stop. So you were there. So there, there are issues. Like some people are hungry. Some people are running out of the gas. You have to do things in life. Uh, and, uh, bathroom. Yeah. That's, yeah, right. Right. that's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. No, but I mean, you, you just had to roll with it, I guess. Yeah, that, that was that was tiring. And yeah. Kept thinking, I see some lights ahead. We'll go again and 
seven hours dead stop. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Were and you were you looking at the GPS to see how far the red went and all of that? Or? We weren't far actually. It was probably half mile. Oh my goodness! Wow, and you got pretty well acquainted with Bucky's. I'm guessing during that time. <laughs> yeah, Are you a Bucky's guy? Yeah, I just get just, gas and go. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, I clean bathrooms though. I will see, go. we wouldn't be able to do a road trip together because then at that, I mean, I'm in there and I'm going for anything: t-shirts, hats, koozies. I mean, whatever they got in it's there. It's Disney I'm, World for days. It, it is. It is. I mean, without much we travel, we're still Bucky, Disney World. Bucky's is my Disney. We have world. to talk soccer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have to talk soccer. <laughs> so you team Martin off to a 0 one and two start, back to back draws already with a goalkeeper of the week award and defender of the week award, Mac. Titus and Parker Galinas now defending those titles coming up here. The reward, uh, the awards will be announced on Tuesday. But coach, want to talk for a second? First, let's go to Max. She transfers in from North Texas, has got some time at Mississippi State. But in the first couple of matches for her as a Skyhawk, she has been, I mean, fantastic. Yeah, she's been good. You know what you ask from a keeper is to make the saves you're supposed to make, and if you can come up the extraordinary, then let's do that sometimes too. And she's been solid with the saves that she's supposed to make and been, you know, you make it difficult for the other team to score goals, Mm -hmm. clean up some of the mistakes that you make defensively. And we've been very good defensively in front of her, but she's done everything we've asked her to do. So she's, she's been good. Now on to Parker. This is something that I've wanted to talk about ever since that announcement came out. She won defender of the week, misses these past two seasons, was on, was a freshman, OVC freshman of the year, 2021, misses 2022 with a knee injury, plays in the first match of last season, gets hurt again. And then over the summer thought that her career was over, had another injury there to the knee, but then finds out that everything's actually okay. She can come back, play her senior season. She gets awarded with OVC defender of the week. I mean, just talk about her resilience and how she's been able to inspire the team, inspire you all as a coaching staff with how she's just gritted this thing out. Well, it takes a special person to be a great teammate when you're facing injury because you just sometimes you feel like I I can't really contribute. I'm just going to go off to myself. But she has been, even through injury when she couldn't play, an incredible teammate, always there to do whatever, you know, chase balls down in training or do whatever she could. And uh, that's it's an inspiration to players that, that are healthy. And, uh, yeah, when I found out last year, she came into the office and said, I, I think I'm done. I hated that for her because I could see it, how, how, uh, how tough that was. And then called me this summer and said, I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. So I said, well, that's it's great to have you back. Uh, yesterday was when he walked out on the field to just walk, do a quick walkthrough when we got there. That was the match where she tore ACL last year. So SP, yep. it was good to see her play 90 minutes yesterday and not be carried off. Right. So, no, she's been great. She's been absolutely fantastic, too. Looks like old partner, even better, I mean, with the experience that she's been able to get. So something I've been interested about whenever I've been at practice or whenever we've had media day is the chemistry with this group. This chemistry, I feel like, is one of the hardest things to get with the team. You can have all the best players, but it's about building up chemistry in the group. And this team really does love each other. They love hanging out with each other, being around each other. How awesome is that to see as a coach and know that, all right, well, that's taken care of. I mean, everybody seems to mesh well. Yeah, I think with that, you got to have uh, mutual respect. Not everybody has to be best friends, but they're pretty close, and and there's a respect for everybody. I think the big thing is that when you, when you have that chemistry, you don't want to let your teammates down, and, and you want to work hard. So this this group works hard every day, and that's I think the the teams that I've had that haven't had this type of chemistry. There's a, you get a little more selfish nature sometimes. And I think with this, it's, we're going to work hard for each other. And, and uh, we don't want to let our teammates down who are working hard. And, uh, and they, they're, they're fun, too. They, yeah, I want them to show their personalities. And sometimes they're a bit goofy. And I think you saw it with the mustaches on Media Day. <laughs> and then I don't, I don't mind that at all. I want they're, they're serious when we need to be serious. But they're not afraid to, to show their personalities at times too, and and uh, yeah, I, I want them to have a chemistry idea. reveals itself in different ways, though, right? With each, I mean, you coached a lot of teams that have different types of chemistry. Yeah, I think there's sometimes where it's as a coach, you have to be the one that sort of guides that, and that's probably worst case. I think here it's been more player driven, and and uh, with starting with Katie Hunt last year, and Izzy, and Parker, and, and that you know that whole group with Brooke and. 
and that group, even you know Michaela and, and I and, and the whole group of upperclassmen, are they have high expectations for themselves, and, and that sort of bleeds into the the younger players. And yeah, yeah it's it's been yeah, it's, I I couldn't have asked for a better group to come into. And now the view of the conference here after one season. I know OVC play is still a little while away, but you came in, saw this, saw this Ohio Valley for the first time. Uh, what was your thought here on what this conference brings to the table? Very competitive. Yeah, I, I think top to bottom, it's there's not a team that you circle on the schedule and say that's that's almost a bye week where we're gonna we're gonna go into that game get three points. We have we have to play well every week. And on the other side of that too, there's not a team at the top that you think. Well, they're they're in the top fifteen, and they're going to walk away with this. We have to. We need them to to slip up against someone else, and we need to get a result. Because I think, yeah, it's it's cliche that anybody can beat anybody, and and now with ties in the picture too, it, it really complicates it. Yeah. But but I think what I've learned is, yeah, you know, we're we're as talented I think as as any other team. So we're just going to have to put put it together on match days and and stay healthy, which has been. A bit of a problem so far. You knew about the OVC and you knew about UT Martin uh, because you'd been in soccer in in this area playing. But were there any misconceptions? Is there anything that revealed itself to you once you got into the conference and at UT Martin? Well, I think the teams that I was familiar with, the Tennessee Techs and Morehead States, didn't didn't surprise me. I really didn't know a lot about SIUE or the the, the Western or Eastern Illinois or, or or any of those programs and and. Uh, yeah, I've known some of the coaches, but I really didn't pay attention to them. Even when I was on some some selection committees, it was always south or southeast. Mm-hmm. So I really didn't see a lot of those games. And I think just the yeah you know, the overall the, the facilities in the conference are, are pretty nice. The you know the overall athletic athleticism in our in the conference is is pretty good. And and uh, yeah, it's it's just it's a competitive conference. It's a it's fun to compete. Yeah. Now, four players joined from overseas, too. You have Anna Ustergaard Ibsen from Denmark, Alberte Ambi also from Denmark, Ava Huntrudz from England, Uni Wolf from Sweden. I know Chris always talks about whenever we do basketball games, it's just seeing how the game has grown. Obviously, soccer is worldwide known and has been for a long time. But talk about going into recruiting these players and bringing them into a small town in America, yeah. getting them to come play soccer here at UT Martin. Yeah, there's... You know, there's some different stories with all of their paths, and and not Martin's not the ideal place for everybody. Some some internationals want to come over and use it as vacation and spend time at the beach. Some want big city, and uh, you know, I, I I know some people that that know these players, and they know that that we'll look after them when they're here. And you know, you look at at uh, we, we call her Birdie. Alberta, and I—it's—it's it's not even Alberta. It's—it's it's, you got to put a Danish spin on it. <laughs> but she grew up in a. She, she, I told her we had cows. She said, "I'm I'm sold." Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, she she was looking for an area like this, and and it was it was perfect. Um, Ava, I got to see when I went over with ODP last year, and very impressive as a player. And talk to her after and ask if she'd ever had any interest in coming to the States. And she may, might consider it and then got her to come over. And unfortunately, she's going to have to redshirt this year. But right after she was named one of the top 10 freshmen to watch in the country by Top Door Soccer, mm-hmm. she, she's going to have to redshirt this year. But, you know, she's another one that's been very, very good teammate. And but but all, all of them have done very well and, and I think we'll continue to do so. Anna and Uni have both started the first three matches for us and have been been you know, played vital roles. So I think they're all doing well along with the other the new ones that have come in as well. With basketball we see the international styles a little different. Is it the same with soccer or does it depend on the region internationally? Yeah, I think the internationally they have some some adjustments. One is the substitution rule where Typically, if you're out of a match, if you get subbed out, you are, you're done for the day. Mm-hmm. So I have to explain that to them because if you get subbed out in the first half in an inter- international match, means your coach does not like how you <laughs> play. So if I take them off in the first half, the, the first instinct is head down Uh-oh, and, oh, yeah. my goodness, I must be really bad today. Yeah. But I, you know, to, to explain, we have two matches in a weekend, which they're not used to, and I can put you back in. 
and then I can so I can re-enter you in the second half, and then I can take you out in the second half. I can put you back in in the second half. They're like, Coach, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, this isn't even soccer. This isn't even football. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> is it, what are we even playing right now? What, what is this? <laughs> crazy rules. <laughs> Chris and I talked to the star of the show about Scott Palooza. That's going to be Thursday. Going to have a big crowd there near Pacer Pond. And then your match against Indiana State is that night on Thursday. I mean, fans have got to come out. This is going to be a really good match against the Sycamores team from the Missouri Valley Conference team you met up with last year. I, this is going to be a perfect match. Match. Again, it's going to be a little warm, but again, everybody just hydrate and That's then right. come on out. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a great night, though. No, I think you know you eat at the food trucks out there, and then you put it put in some steps to, to work that off a little exactly. bit, right over to the soccer field, <laughs> and the calories off. Come on over, right. and then you're right back. I can't ride in the golf cart. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I Jody will come. Oh, okay. <laughs> Joe, I don't know where Jody. There's Jody. Jody will do a taxi service with the golf cart. <laughs> She'll get everybody over. She'll get everybody set up for for the match with Indiana State. Well, Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Look forward to see how the rest of the season plays out. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. And we're back here on Skyhawk Sports Talk. Davis Gregory here, still with me, Chris Brinkley, and now joining us, head coach of the UT Martin volleyball team, now entering her 10th season Ooh, as head I've coach. I've been here that long. <laughs> Jack Jackie. Wilson, she joins us now. Mm-hmm. Coach, year 10, first off, we'll start off with the off season. How has that been, spending time with the kiddos and the family and then getting set up here for this season? Gosh, it's gone fast. Summer's gone really fast. Uh, we traveled a lot to see some family, and um, it was great. It was great. The kiddos are growing fast. I've got next week a five-year-old, and then Callie's in first grade, um, six. So it's just going fast. Yeah, pretty busy always, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they are growing up quick. It's a lot of fun to have them around the volleyball <laughs> where, where did you travel? Where did you go? Oh, goodness. We went to Florida. We went to Michigan. My sister lives in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, Ohio. Went to Florida twice. Um, I got to go down and visit the Ritters. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes I, I miss... Um, that family very much. Jen and I were really great friends and our kiddos. So I, I went through on my way back from Florida with the kids and we kind of surprised the kids. We didn't tell them and uh, it was a great two nights. So good. It's absolutely, that is so awesome. So now on to volleyball, open up the season in Tuscaloosa this weekend at the Crimson Tide Invitational. You get Citadel, Grambling State on Friday and then at Alabama. Just talk about the excitement here for this group to get things going. I know last year didn't end how you all wanted it to, but now clean slate, ready to go here with match week. Clean slate, totally new team. I mean, we, we're our makeup is so different. Uh, this team is really, really unique. It's really special. Um, I, I it, we're getting into the, probably one of the hardest weeks of for student athletes is I'm starting to make the hard decisions, but so we'll see how they respond there. But I've never been around a team that competes. And I don't know if this makes sense, but competes with so much love. I mean, they compete and they compete hard and they challenge each other, but um, the energy and, and the love they have for the game and each other is really special, and um, it's something I've, I've really never That's experienced. Awesome. Yeah, so. play, players have changed. I mean, you're, now you're in a different kind of generation. I know it's been 10 years, but since you've yeah. been coaching, players are different. Very different. Very different. And kind of fun fact, we opened with Citadel. That was my first Division One win as a coach. Oh, uh, yeah, at yeah. Georgia Tech. That was our first win. Or my first win as a coach in Division One, and so we're excited to compete. You know, we I always say you look really good in your own gym mm-hmm. because you're up against. I mean, your best or you are the best in the gym. So mm-hmm. um, it's exciting to get to to go down and try a few different things, which is what you do during preseason, and see if we can find the right mix up. And a lot of great players are turning for this team. One of them, Dylan Mott, OVC player to watch, over 1,000 career digs. And you got eight starters, in, or eight returners in total, excuse me, four starters back. But going with Dylan first, she's been on this team for quite some time, but a major force for you. Yes, all. thank you, COVID, for giving me <laughs> Dylan Mott for one more I've year. I've never heard those three right? words. I know, <laughs> I know. Right? you got to find the positive there. Um, we And we redshirted. At the time, it was a great decision, Dylan and Beach. So we have the whole year um, with Dylan Mott, and we're so excited about that. She looks better than she's ever looked right now. I, I, you know, I don't know if she just came in 
knowing this was going to be her last hoorah. And um, she's playing with a lot of confidence. She's always had a very high IQ for the sport with her mom being a collegiate coach at Austin P. And um, I've, she's being an awesome leader. Uh, seeing more energy and more personality out of her in that leadership role on the court than I've ever seen before. Really excited about her. And she coach yeah. someday? I th- yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think she'll follow in her mom's footsteps. I mean, it's in her blood. Yeah. She's, she's so knowledgeable about this game. And I can have conversations with her on kind of a coaching level. And I really respect her input. And, um, yeah. And when you have an extension of a coach on the floor, that's huge. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. And I think she would tell you her growth from when she came in. I mean, my relationship with her, where it started to where it is, she was a, a tough one to break. You know, she's just, she's, you know, kind of shielded and, and that shield both with the team, with myself. Um, once you get past it, man, what a special person. And I have a really strong connection with her and I kind of had to work for it. But um, those are the best, though. They really are. When you they both really have to are. earn it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yes. just to see what she's doing, you know, with having so many new players and she's in this leadership role and it's, she's just grown into even so much more than I ever expected. And I love that for her and I love that for our program. And Jenna Valley also coming back to, she is another great player expected to have a big year for you all. Yes. Yes. Je- again, Jenna looks better than ever. Um, she worked really hard this summer. Thank you. Thank goodness. Um, you know, she goes back home to France. And um, I think last spring, to be honest, uh, we, we had some ups and downs in the fall with Jenna. And I think transitioning from a junior college to Division One uh, was an adjustment. And um, she had to really work for her time. And in the spring, we put her in a really tough role in the ones pair in Beach. And um, I, I think she was pushed further than she ever knew she was able to like to work that hard and push that hard and um i think we've unlocked something and and i think you're going to see her have a really really great year and Addie vaughn her leadership i understand that she might be changing positions this year i mean talk about that as a senior willing to do i mean whatever it takes to make the team be in their best position possible for sure you know and we've done it with Addie since her freshman year we threw her um, in the middle for a brief second her freshman year because that's just what we needed and coming into the season we knew um, we were we were short depth a little in the middle and we knew we were looking for her to be on the right side some this year but she was the first one we thought of who could cross train who could mentally and physically handle it and would be up for the challenge um, she wants to be on the court and she's willing to you know adapt wherever we need her and um, again, whatever the team needs, I think we have a group this year who is really willing to do whatever the team needs. And getting told by Ryan Rickman that this is the largest group of freshmen that we've ever had on the volleyball roster. And talk about how the game has grown to where these players, I mean, freshmen are ready to go lock in. You can put them in and they will be ready to serve the team in whatever way possible. And even in a starting role, maybe just talk about how the game's improved and how I guess some of these club teams and coaches have, have improved over the couple past couple of years to get these young freshmen in a position to where they can go and immediately contribute. Yeah, for sure. And and I don't. I was uh, interviewed with OVC, and I had mentioned I really credit their club coaches and um, I, and high school for their IQ and preparing them for this. I've never had a freshman class with um, as game ready as this. Um, and you know, I, I think there's we've got a little bit of mix, but we do have a big freshman class. Last year we had none on the indoor roster. We had one beach only. Um, so the energy is young and fresh, which has been a lot of fun too. Uh, but you're definitely going to see some freshmen on the court this year, um, in starting roles. You played at a very high level. So yeah, if, if your freshman class, your freshman class, when you played as a freshman takes on a good freshman class today, is it competitive? Oh my goodness. It's so different, you know, Uh, it's just so different. And, um, I think the game has changed so much that it, it, I'm going to say no, I'm going to say no. I mean, you've got a lot more size, a lot more IQ. Um, a lot of these kids are playing beach and indoor. What the beach game has done, I would have killed to play. It just wasn't what it yeah. is now. Um, 
So I'm going to be humble and say, Yeah, no. I'm impressed because most uh, athletes, I think, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I'm not like asking that because you play with the highest level, but this yes. is good for the sport. Oh, it's so it's great for the sport, yeah. and I'm I'm really excited for us. Again, I don't know until we get up against other teams, so I can see film of teams in our conference. You have no idea where you're going to stack up. Um, but I, I am really excited about what we have in our gym. And talking about that excitement, go a little bit more in depth here. Is yet another year about to start? I know we have all of our athletics teams about to start. Soccer's already getting going. Football on Saturday, but volleyball too. I mean, honestly, in my humble opinion, the Skyhawk Fieldhouse when it's packed out, oh, I mean, it's, great. it's one of the best yeah. gyms in the entire OVC. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I love our gym. I love our venue. Um, I hope we can pack it out. I hope we can get people there. I, I'm going to go out on a limb um, and say this is going to be the most fun team to watch we've ever had. Oh, good. Um, I, I think we've always prided ourselves on having scrappy teams. We work a lot on ball control and defense. Uh, I think our defense is going to be on another level this year. Um, I'm not saying we have like, oh my gosh, we've got this all-star, this all-star. We just have a team of gritty girls and um, they play really hard for each other. It's, it's, it's different. It's different. I'm excited for I, I, it. I did not schedule a lot of watching the Olympics, but ended up watching quite a bit. And every time volleyball was on, I would watch. Did you watch much? <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't yeah, get to watch. Were there, busy, yes. yeah. um, but I, of course, I watched a lot of clips or a, a lot yeah. of runbacks. And when I could catch it, I, you know, rather it was men's, women's, beach, indoor. Um, I love it. It's so fast. Yeah, and you it's know, great it's to have the sport on a global stage yes. like that. I yeah. think, yeah, for sure. The beach. I mean, some of yeah. those rallies. It's just incredible, the fitness level of those athletes, and um, you know, it's exciting. It gets you. I mean, it, I I love the Olympics, and for the sport of volleyball, the growth, the momentum of it. I mean, you've got professional leagues now that I think are going to be here to stay in the States, which has never happened. Um, there's so much support behind the sport. And um, I hope we feel it here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we've grown over we've, our support's grown over the years for sure. And we're so thankful for that in our community and the university. Um, but I hope we feel it and see it more this year. Yeah, it's going to be a great year. Coach, thanks so much for joining us and good luck this Thank season. Thank you. I appreciate it. If I quit this season, I still be the greatest. Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan. And we're back here on Skyhawk Sports Talk. Joining us now, head coach of the UT Martin football team, Jason Simpson, entering year 19. Skyhawks kick off the year. 19. At 19. 19, coach. 19. <laughs> you, look, you look the same. No. <laughs> and he's almost shaven. <laughs> you know? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I think this is how we started exactly the first yeah, episode yeah. last year. Was, yeah, it's, it's the same one, man. Yeah. Let me say again. I mean, I remember the first time I met you when you mm -hmm. came from Chattanooga. And you and your family and, and Ty and Graham and Emma have just really become a huge part of this community. It's just, I mean, obviously, even beyond, but they've planted roots here. And I just want to thank you for staying here and all that you've done. It's been a blessing. It, it really has. This is, um, you know, we're glad to be part of this community. And, uh, you know, I think you and I talked about this one time before. Uh, I think I probably was about 35 or 36, right? People say, well, where are you from? You know, where's home? And uh, being from Mississippi, right? It's Ellisville, Mississippi. And, you know, now it's it's Martin, Tennessee. Yeah. yeah I'm quite, very proud Could of it. Could you have ever imagined when you first came here it, that all these years later, here we'd be? You know, it, I, I tell kind of, you know, uh, a testimony or what do you, you want to call it is that, uh you know, it, it was God's plan for me. It was God's path. And, uh, you know, sometimes we fight it. Sometimes we, we don't understand it. And then, but uh, when you see 100, you know, 110, 120 players in your building mm -hmm. and the, and the opportunities that you have to help them grow, help them succeed, and help them, um, you know, face, you know, different hurdles that you go through with that age in life. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I feel very close to that. And, and the football is fun, uh, but it's a small part of the job. My last thing, and then I'll let you go. <laughs> go ahead. No, I, I, um, I uh, we got no time. It was way too late, and I apologize. But I emceed the Weekly County Sports Hall of Fame. Bob yeah. Carroll was inducted. Yeah. And, and I uh, had all my quotes. And then I woke up that morning. I thought I got to ask yeah, him something. You did. And then so you gave me a quote about Bob Carroll right. and, and what he did to this program. You don't have to talk about him right now because right. we know what he did for this program. Yeah. But you have done 
exactly what Bob Carroll has done now. I mean, you, I mean, in 20 years, when we look back, whenever you're inducted into the UT Martin Hall of Fame, it's going to be the same story. I mean, well, I, the first thing, when you, when you text me that about Coach Carroll, you know how sometimes I get asked to, you know, say some, some, a statement on somebody, and, I, and I'm very proud to do that. And sometimes it takes you a little while to word it exactly right, but I thought that was very you know, telling on my relationship with Coach Carroll when I think about him and our program, you know, it took me like 30 seconds, you know, it was off the top of my head. But you said every win you've ever had, he's a part of it. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, first of all, we're in the Bob Carroll building. You yeah. know? So we don't just call it the facility. We don't call it the football building. It's the, it's the Bob Carroll. And, you know, so you hear his name resonating. I do that particularly on a purpose. Yeah. And I, I, you know, whether others do it or not. So, uh, no, Coach Carroll, uh, it's been a blessing to know him as a man. Uh, and then when you – the history of, of what how he started this program yeah. and, and was the, the, the history of it, uh, just really neat. You know, I don't know if there's anything in my age that I've been a part of that that I was the on, on the, the ground floor of something. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and especially something that's uh, that's you know over 75, 80 years along now. You know, in, in, in four year football, and Coach Carroll's been that. So, uh, and I think he's ninety two or ninety three right, years right, old, right? right. And yeah. Very active still. No, I'm sure, he gets his golf in and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, re- uh, really neat. But I don't know. I don't really think about my my tenure. I think uh, my mind is still back in two thousand six, and yeah. you know, I was enamored that Coach Carroll had eighty something wins as a head coach while he was here for. I don't know, what was it, 13, 14 years as a head coach? And and then every once in a while, somebody reminds me, 19 years and, you know, X amount of wins. And I go, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, but I'm very proud of it. Uh, you know, the competitive nature of you, you know, because you know there's probably 10 if you'd have coached better, you know, would have had. And there probably be more championship trophies, uh, you well, know, in the trophy case. You know, part of it is just your knowledge as a coach, your talent as a coach, your talent to find players. But it's also stability. And you, you had a stability with this program. Yeah, that uh, is unheard of at this level. I, I'm very proud of that. I think it helps. It helps us recruit players. You know, one of the things we talk about uh, with players is okay. You know, there's two types of head coaches: one that's been fired, and one that's going to be fired. Okay, <laughs> so if the team that you're talking to has got a two, three win season in the last two years, right? Then you know, what are you getting into? Now, if you only got one year left, then okay. But if you've got multiple years left, you know, we can provide. We feel like we can provide you. Uh, track record of stability and maybe that helps you grow as a player I think it I think it helps us uh, certainly at this level when you go through coaches uh, over a period of time the experience of, of, of doing it and not panic I mean we lost the coach uh, during camp mm. uh, Miami came and hired him as a you know kind of a, a defensive line analyst okay so you know a good high paying opportunity for him and uh you know uh, i don't begrudge him that opportunity but that that you know we had to make some movement i'm very happy with the d-line coach uh rudy griffin that we brought in here and uh the kids were great and uh the d-line was and gave me about 48 hours to to get it under control and 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 get them back in the you know uh, get them a coach that they could relate to and learn from and so uh that seems like six months ago but it was only three weeks ago mm-hmm. All right, Davis, let's talk yeah, about right, here, we go. Um, here we go. Four conference championships well, for you, Coach. Going for number five, but I feel like talking with you, hearing all your interviews and the players talk, and being around the guys here in this offseason, I feel like this group is more motivated to get this championship and also a playoff berth, maybe more than any of the other teams that you've had. What can you say about that? Yeah, you, you might be right. Uh, I was thinking about that the other day. First, I had a senior dinner at my house um, uh, Saturday, I guess. Yeah, Saturday afternoon. And I only invited the the players that have no more eligibility because it's it's different this day and time, right? Yeah. I mean, there's there's some that are do they want to play their six year? Uh, there's all kind of waivers. Can you get another year and stuff? But no, these are the ones that yeah, had used up there. No matter what, this is their last go round. And there was 18 of them. Okay, well, we're a very old team. Uh, we got 18, and then you know there's probably there's there's probably 25 to, to 30 in that. Uh, the class underneath them, okay. Whether they're playing their their, their next year is the sixth or the fifth, so we're very um, my older team. Um, so you got a lot of guys that have been here with us: the the Tevin Ships, the Chris Hunters, uh, the Zoe Roberts. You know that have been here, uh, Josiah Tingley, guys that have been here five and six years. And then there's another group that's been here three years. And then there's some that have only been here. This is their first year. Uh, so yeah, there is. 
Montana State memories from two years ago. Those are there. Uh, there's hurt feelings on Sunday the last two years when we didn't get a playoff bid. Uh, you know, so there's there's a great track record of that. There's a track record of knowing, you know, how it's supposed to sound and how the practice is supposed to go to give you a chance on Saturday. You know, and if you capitalize on all those things, then uh, they're to your advantage. The, the danger of it is, and I bring it up to the, the guy's attention almost every day, is that because you know those things, okay, the younger team or a, a less uh, experienced winning team doesn't know those things, okay, and they're and they're and they're hungry, okay. So we still have to do all the things that are necessary uh, to get back to a certain point, okay. So trying to stay hungry, trying not to rush things, uh, that's the challenge of of, of, of this team, of, of really any winning team. What's your quick two sentence advice for a person who knows this is their last season? Oh, good one. You know, you, first thing, the, the normal thing, say, hey, you don't have any regrets, you know, and I'm always asking, you know, what will your legacy be? OK, will it be three conference championship? That's good. All right. Will it be four? Right. Will it be a deep playoff run? You know, what, what will your team uh, legacy be? And, and I remind them, hey, you got 48 quarters, 12 games this year. It's 48 quarters. You know, and it just and, and it gets subtracted by four, you know, every week and stuff. So uh, we had a good camp. I'm very pleased with our camp. Uh, we got some guys dinged up. We're going to have to play through that right now. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Tough. The schedule's tough early, right? You saw the CMO, you saw North Alabama. Those are two good quality teams, as well as going on the road this week with uh, Kansas State. And start with Kansas State. And before we get into any players, I know that here in the past couple of years, there's been a lot of – good teams that you have played Georgia last year and then Tennessee a couple of years ago too and Kansas State is this the first time you've played yeah. at Kansas State yeah I think it was his first big 12 team we played I was, I was, that was I think so, yeah. first big 12 yeah. team yeah. so being able to get that first test right out of the gates and I think I saw something the other day Kansas State's favored by like 38 or something like that but then I sit back and I look at it coach and you said that this team is older and has mm-hmm. experience mm-hmm. and I mean Personally, for me, they're going to go up there and, I mean, they're going to put up a really good fight against this team. All right. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and I always approach last week, last year, you know, you're approaching the same way uh, because, in, in, you know, you have to have the intentions and you have to be intentional about the uh, the intentions as you, as you go forward, okay? <laughs> but, yeah. you know, nobody, in, you know, but then you have to take care of the ball. You, you know, all those things, avoid penalty, all, all those things unfold as we continue to talk about beat the game and the, the – our mindset of, of that we approach every game and stuff, but uh, no, after playing Georgia last year and Knoxville the year before, uh, you know I think they're more excited than they are necessarily intimidating. All right, um, you know I was uh, kidding my staff. I was like, look, we're going to uh, the athletic director's uh, alma mater, you know, so <laughs> uh, you can't embarrass him, guys. You know, we got to put a, a quality team on the field. So, uh, but we're looking forward to it. No, it'd be a great venue, and um, you know, and so. Uh, you, you know, you would much rather take an older team like this into an environment like that than uh, maybe some of the other ones that are young. Getting into this team, starting over with O'Shea, he, I feel like every single week Alex is putting something out about an honor that he had gotten preseason All-American. He's been a guy that's been here for quite a while. He's been a major contributor to this team. What's he bringing to the table this year? Um, o- o- O'Shea has tremendous um, football IQ. He's, he's working at receiver as well, um, you know, so we'll see how much he plays at receiver this year. But he, uh, I really admire him to be able to practice both ways, okay? And we don't do it exclu- – uh, you know, we try to monitor it and, and kind of limit it a little bit. But if something happened to one of those first four receivers, you would see O'Shea play more and more at receiver, okay? He's a good player. He's got really good ball skills. I admire O'Shea's knowledge of, of the game. He sees big picture of things. Um, yeah, you know, I would tell you, O'Shea's a guy you like having conversations about football with, whether it's UT Martin football or pro football or whatever. He really respects the game and, and respects the history of the game. Uh, a lot of these older guys do. It's a, uh, it, I think that's one of the strengths that they have. You know, some things that I think O'Shea would tell you is that, you know, what are some things that I can do better? Uh, you know, not just rely on those ball skills. Sometimes the ball doesn't come your way, right? But, you know, being, you know, putting, putting his body Body in better positions, not just uh, mentally knowing that the ball, I've studied this formation, I know the ball is supposed to be going over there, let me look over here, uh, and, and then 
uh, you know, and then they decide to run a double post and, you know, get in enough depth to be where he's supposed to be. So, uh, you know, so you're always, you play to your strengths, but understand, you know, sometimes your strength can can bite you a little bit. And, and when O'Shea gives up a play, it's usually because of something like that. He's, um, you know, um, I don't know if overthinking is the right word, okay, but he just has a real good knowledge of things. But no, we're very blessed to have O'Shea back for senior year. Does a really good job on the punt returning, punt return game for us. Uh, he's just a good football player, and he's a good person. I'm very proud. And flipping over to the offense, going first to the offensive line, three major returners there, Vance Van Every, yeah. Drake Carroll, and then Josiah Tingley yeah. as well. I don't know if you knew, but I'm an honorary boss hog now. <laughs> Coach Bannon made me an honorary boss hog before the year started. So, <laughs> fired up. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think you better check on that. Be a little bit apprehensive, okay, <laughs> okay. because they might be – they might be pulling your leg a little bit, and there's some type of initiation where they're going to take you out. Oh gosh! Put you in a um, uh, in a um, hot trough or something yeah, like, like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're not 300 pounds, I don't know exactly if you can if you okay. can be in there. So, so I got to watch my corners. Is what I need to be do. Be a little careful with it. Davis okay. will never <laughs> be 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my mind might be a lot of things in life that I don't right. see 300 okay. pounds. Are they even giving you that tie up if they want you to buy lunch or something? <laughs> Right, exactly. I'm going to have to pay for Zach's piece one day. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even in that group. I'm not even in that group. But, uh, no, those I, I enjoy those kids. They're smart guys. I mean, Desai's been here going into year five. He walked onto the program. Uh, you know, he's just kind of a glue guy. Uh, he's on a punt, on a punt unit. He's a sh- on the shield. Um very smart. I really – I like watching those three guys. Coach Bannon's done a great job with it. The kids have done a great job. Those three inside guys, there's, there's not any twist games or blitz patterns or whatever that they haven't seen before because there's so many snaps. You know, Vance has been playing six years, junior college, one year at Ohio, and then here for a year or two. Drake's been playing year seven for him. Okay. Wow. The Louisiana Tech, junior college, a couple of years, I guess year three here for us. Um, and it's really fun to watch them work. They, they don't have very long arms. They're not very tall, but they're powerful people, with great intelligence or, or physicality. Uh, and they, they, they really find satisfaction into knowing, hey, the Mike linebacker's pushed this way. I see his right shoestring is undone. I know his butts. I mean, they just they do a really unique job of seeing those things. And uh, it makes us better. It gives us a chance each week because of that. So, no, they're the pulse. They, they really are. Um, you know, and, and, and it's really been neat. A lot of times offensive linemen don't talk a whole lot. I'm not talking about that to the other team, even to their, current, even to their own team, right, because they have to play so many reps in practice. There's so much contact and stuff. And these guys just embrace it every day. Getting the huddle is probably one of the highlights of my day, right? They always got some joke for me. Just I was always like, let me guess, we're going to start on the left hash. <laughs> you know, he says it's a trick play when I spot the ball on the right hash, you know, throughout practice and all. But uh, they're just good people. They're smart. They're intelligent. And um, I'm excited for them. And they're going to be protected now. Second year quarterback, Kincaid Dent. And ask Josiah about him and being able to block for him, protect him during that offseason OVC Media Day. That, I mean, he finally had a summer with this team yeah. at a spring what have you seen from him and his progression well first let me say this I'm, I'm excited about all three of our quarterbacks yeah. I really am I don't know that we've had we've had you know Dresser Wynn we've had Derek Carr uh, you know Keon all right, but we've got three guys that we can win games with. Okay, I really feel like that. It's probably the the most talented quarterback room uh, that that we've had. Okay, and they've all really worked hard uh, this summer. Uh, you know, with Julian and uh, Kai Sharon transfer from Kentucky, he really improved from the spring uh, through the summer and through camp. Okay, Julian did as well. Wasn't with us either in the spring. He's a transfer from Grambling. Then Kai is a transfer from Kentucky. And then, uh, and then, of course, Kincaid's from Ole Miss and, and this past year. Uh, one of the things is talking about Kincaid is that um, he's a real football guy. We talk a lot of ball. We watch a lot of tape together. He's got a great personality. He's a good teammate. Uh, he enjoys being around, uh, you know, and – just see his growth from the fall to right now, just so much more comfortable. He understands why these things, I mean, think about it. When you join an offense, especially a college player, all right, uh, and you got to learn all new verbiage, okay? 
And and when you don't know why something was named like that, okay, and sometimes you're second guessing yourself and you're just a little bit slower. You know, when you go back and look at um, Kincaid's stats from last year, you know, first thing that pops out is he was a quarterback of an eight win team, okay, and you could argue good enough to win 10 games last year, for, you know, with uh, Gardner Webb and, and, and Sanford, okay, they were, that team was probably good enough to do that. Um, you know, he threw 25 touchdowns with only eight interceptions, and I think two of the interceptions were in the last game, okay? So that's a good touchdown to interception ratio right there. But the one thing he wants to improve on, and we need him to, is completion percentage. We were only 54% last year, okay? That thing's got to get up 64%, okay? So he's really worked hard on that. Uh, he's playing faster. He understands big picture of things for us from the because when you're thinking in your mind where every, you know what does that verbiage mean? Okay, sometimes the then you got to go do it right. It can make you just a you know yeah. half beat off. But he's really improved on his throwing mechanics. He's really worked hard on uh, some things we've really tweaked and and he's t- taking it to heart. And uh, so I see an improved player now. In the last two weeks, he hadn't got very many reps. Uh, we had a, an unfortunate thing happen in scrimmage. Just a defense lineman fell into his knee all right so uh, I believe he had a an MCL uh, grade one or something like that so we had to really kind of protect him here for the last two weeks mentally he hadn't missed a big beat yesterday was kind of the first day that he went back with the first team and got a bunch of reps and I think today he'll be back moving pretty good but uh, you know there's a great possibility you could see all three quarterbacks in the first game you really could um, you know but I'm very pleased with Kincaid's you know improvement but I'm very confident in those other two as well it's good to know for the broadcast just to be able to, oh, okay, all right, here we go. New guy checking in. Going back over to the defense, though, Coach, with two linebackers there. You talked about them, Tevin Ship, Chris Hunter. These are two guys that stepped into a major role, I guess, really last year after they spent, you know, a chunk of time here, a chunk of time there. But then I mean, being around those guys in practice this summer, I mean, they seem like they've really stepped into a leadership role, being verbal leaders, challenging the guys, and making sure they're getting better every day. Right. Well, I can't talk about those two without talking about Jalen Sharp. Right. Okay. Because Evan Sharp's uh, uh, is a starter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he's the more, believe it or not, the more statistically the more herald of the three. Okay. I, I think he's on the preseason. I think so. Yes. Says too. All right. And he's a good player. Transfer on um, his third year uh, from Charlotte. I thought this was pretty neat last night. Uh, we had our ash ceremony. Yes. Right? And those seniors are kind of going through, you know, things they want to be remembered by of characteristics as a, as a player and a person they want to be remembered by, you know, things they know they need to improve on and maybe eliminate habits or of our personality traits. Okay. To make this their best season ever. Okay. And Jalen's was pretty neat. Uh, you know, he said, Hey, you know, complacency. And he said, the reason I say that from a complacent standpoint, he goes, I've been here, you know, it's going on my third year, you know, and you're, the first year I didn't play a whole lot. Okay. We were pretty good. John Ford and that group was in there and, you know, we won. And then last year, Jay was starting. start and, you know, he said, I've been here two years and, you know, we, we won, won a lot of games. I want to make sure we don't take that for granted and stuff. So I was very, very proud of that statement from him. But, uh, no, we like our three of the backers. They're, they're kind of the pulse of the team. Okay. They really are, especially defensively. Uh, you know, Tevin Shipp walked on here. Uh, it's really um, uh, even the first day he was here as a walk-on. He was uh, you saw his leadership qualities, okay, and then he kept getting bigger and stronger, and he's always been able to run. And um, so I thought he had a really, really good camp. So we we were dependent on Tevin Ship a lot. Um, you know, Chris Chris Hunter, he's one of my favorites. Okay, now he may not know that because I'm always t- having to tell him, hey, knock it off or whatever. Because there's times he may take it a little far, but uh, he, Chris is fun. He really is. You, when you want to go to compete, you want Chris around you. Uh, and it wouldn't matter if you were playing pickup basketball or horseshoes, okay? He just – he makes it fun. He makes it um, – you know, he sees big pictures, everything, offense, defense. When he was a young player – I always tell the story, and he wasn't playing a whole lot early in his career. Okay, so the defense normally sits down, right, waiting, you know. So when the offense is out there and I'm calling the plays, okay, I would notice Chris was kind of in my hip pocket. Okay, the defense is sitting over there resting, right? But once again, he wasn't playing a whole lot, but he still was invested in the game. Yeah. Okay, he wasn't over there pouting. It was important for him to play well. You know, and we might call a play, and the kids executed great, you know, and they scored. And, you know, I would hear Chris Hunter behind me, you know, just cheering his teammates on, you know, uh, 
to him. I could hear him sometimes in the back of my in, in the back of my head back there. You know, he, he, I know I know Simp. He, he's gonna run a bootleg right here. <laughs> I know Simp is gonna, and, and you know, and whether he was right or not or whatever, if it scored, you know, I'd look around. He'd high five me, you know. But he was invested into it. It was important to him stuff, and I kid him all the time to where uh, maybe he's gonna be an offensive coordinator one day. <laughs> uh, but no, those, those three backers are good players, and we need them to play well. Last thing for you, I know this is always one of the more exciting weeks Mm -hmm. really for just sports in general. I know we've got all of our athletics starting up. It's also the start really of college football season. Week one, I know your son over at Alabama and just all these games starting off. And talk about the excitement level just around the sport here because this is always one of my favorite times. Labor Day weekend, we're getting football back. No, it is neat. Even as I'm doing this 28 years and it's still exciting. Okay, Today's the first day in three weeks. Okay. Um, almost three and a half weeks, really, uh, 22 practices that the kids hadn't been in the building in the mornings. Okay. So, you know, we got, so as a staff, got the meet longer, right? And put the, put the practice plan to get ready, you know, for the, tonight. This is game week, right? So it's game week. Yeah. Okay. And they're in school. Yeah. And I know they're in school for two weeks before we play, but this, the calendar fell a little different. So, uh, no, so that part, so you know, it's changed when the kids aren't, the players aren't in the building in the mornings. Uh, you know, in my mind, it's, it's changed, right? Uh, you know, different things start happening for the next 12 weeks, mm-hmm. okay, 13 weeks, whatever it is, uh, to where you kind of get in a, in a, in a groove and a, uh, of things that are going, you know, we're going to do this on Monday, right? OVC media days on Tuesday, uh, you know, Thursday or, or Wednesday is third down day, you know, Thursday is red zone day, you know, and those things, no matter what, that's, that's how this thing goes, you know, for the next three months. So as a coach, you kind of get in a groove of things. All right. Uh, now sometimes, unfortunately you can get oblivious to, to the world. Okay. <laughs> so you're working on those things and you try not to. Okay. But I think just from people that general football fans, yourself and my, myself, I, all right, the um, the anticipation of okay, what's going to happen this year? Yeah. All right, because we spent all this time, you know, progress, uh, uh, prognosticators picking this team, this team, this team. All right, but the bottom line is we're just playing the odds. How many, you know, what's their, how many players do they have returning? Okay, what do we think the momentum looks like, and then what's their schedule look like? Yep. Okay. Right. And then when the season starts, the the script is unwritten. Mm-hmm. Our script is certainly on. You know, every team in America script. You don't know. You know. You don't know injuries. How that team's gonna look like. You don't know. Uh, you know how that team is gonna handle adversity. You know penalties. Uh, you know turnovers. Okay. Uh, you know the Florida State Georgia Tech game. I think that's kind of the epitome of what we're talking about, right? Uh, you know, on paper, which one's more talented? Watch the tape and see who played harder and was more physical. Yeah. You know, and it, obviously it was Georgia Tech team. So I think that's why we're all we love the sport because. All right, and you have the whole week to talk about, you know, and analyze the different things that are going to happen. Uh, and then there's normally new stars at the end of the year or big names that that you maybe weren't talking about earlier in the year, and and you forget till the next year that we weren't even talking about that guy earlier <laughs> in the year. So, so, but it's exciting. It certainly is. It's always my favorite part whenever I can finally, I know I get to talking on Saturday, but I can finally shut up about analyzing everything and I can finally watch the <laughs> what, game. What's really yeah, happening. exactly. Yeah. And we are ready to go. Yeah. Well, you know, when the scores come across the ticker of, of ESPN, right, and it doesn't go like we thought it would go, right, then then uh, a new chapter is written for, you know, for the next yeah. week. And I think that's why it's so exciting. It's you know, it's like great literature. It's unpredictable. Yeah, there yeah. are great characters. Yeah. There's hero stories. There's triumph. There's it has everything. And now, yeah. and, uh, and and then you know, the the villains is always a team yeah. guys yeah. That, <laughs> that maybe you don't like their coach or you don't like how they did at the press conference, yeah. or whatever. So it really is. It's exciting. I think uh, it kind of gives people things to think about besides the troubles or different things that they're dealing with. Right? Get your mind off of of uh, just you know. I'm sure at lunchtime there's a lot of people who just go to their phone and go through the oh, yeah. schedule of who's playing who and uh, yeah. you know maybe it makes them have a you know better afternoon at work it's going to be a great year great year coach thanks so much for joining us we'll talk to you next Monday hey thanks guys appreciate it thank you if I quit this season I still be the biggest Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan 
And what a great first show for us, Chris. Yeah, Coach yeah. Reed here at Zaxby's yeah. in Martin, Tennessee. Talk to Coach Simpson. Talk yep. to Coach Henderson. Yep. Coach Farger. Coach Wilson. Everybody is so fired up. I mean, being around him is contagious. Mm -hmm. And I am so excited for this upcoming year in Skyhawk Athletics. Just, I mean, probably, I mean, you are probably more excited. I am excited. You are so ready yeah. to go. I mean, yeah. again, we haven't even started up with, again, our basketball teams or anything like that. And then once we get all those rolling at the same same time you talk about right, that's skyhawk heaven right there yeah, no it is. and we'll be here every monday at noon here at zaxby's for skyhawk sports talk with davis of course go to utmsports.com follow ut martin on social media uh, and just hang out with us and make sure you come to the games and support the skyhawks it's going to be a great year so we will sign off here from the UT Morton Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast. Make sure to tune in next week. We'll get Coach Simpson's opinions on how the Kansas State game went. Preview a massive game against Southeast Missouri next weekend. And also talk to some of our athletes and get into their stories as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure to hop on next week with Chris and I. If I quit this season, I still be the Skyhawk Sports Talk Podcast is brought to you by Weekly Ford Nissan.